Hello, everyone. Welcome to my Module 5 teaching memo. Hope you all slept a little later yesterday. Dr. Laura has been preparing for the time change, going to bed before 9 p.m. and getting up at 4 a.m. She, she says she feels wonderful. Uh, I'm not into that kind of preparation, so I tried to cope all week. I must have missed winter because it's going to be in the high 60s here in Poughkeepsie. I think we're jumping over spring as well. Um, speaking of spring, the Red Sox and Yankees played last week. Not much hype about it. It could be a long year for the Red Sox. March Madness is about to begin, and the science of bracketology will become in vogue once more. The news is all about the coronavirus. Uh, Turo Live classes are moving to online. At least that's not one thing you all must worry about with this class. So stay safe and take precautions. All right, a little housekeeping. After grading the progress monitoring discussion board posts, I was impressed by the depth of many of your responses. Those of you who are using the readings and digging in uh, for other supporting information are truly getting the most out of this course. Progress monitoring part of the RTI is one, as I mentioned many times, is one component least seen in schools. You should now know that there is an empirical process to determine if students are making adequate progress and that you can have them take part in the charting of it. One area in which I am concerned is that many of you are not using all of the assigned readings to support your initial post comments. You also need to insert your opinion as well as show me you have mastered the module learning targets. So it's not just a research paper, as I've mentioned many times. Uh, I am looking for more than a short term, uh, short -term paper uh, with citations. Many of you are still struggling with correct APA. Please check my comments on your initial post upload. Um, you, you're not, if you're not using my feedback, you're going to continue to lose points in your initial post. You can't get a proficient or advanced in your initial post unless you have proper APA and you've used all of the readings. Um, I sent everyone a remind message that you are to post your initial selected response test without answers so your classmates can take it. <laughs> they can't take it if you have the answers in it. This is all part of the development, developmental process doing a pilot test, just like they do for large scale tests, which we are going to get into this week, this module. Um, uh, what questions are working and which ones not might be? Uh, I'm always concerned about people not participating in the group process of taking and giving feedback on the draft test. This is one time you can't wait till the sun, last Sunday of the second module. Many of you posted your learning targets for the first time yesterday. Uh, your feed, and now you, you're, you haven't gotten feedback in your, in your selected response test in order to get proficient credit had to be posted yesterday. So that's an issue. That's gonna be the same thing when you post your selected response test on this Sunday, um, people are going to have moved on. They're going to be on to revising their test and posting it in the revised selected response test discussion board. So this is a time where you need to get on top of it. You can't wait till the last minute. Uh, as as um, I would have to admit, not many of you are doing that, but there is a group of people that are doing that. And you're going to be getting yourself in a bind uh, at the end when your selected response test is due and nobody has taken it. Um, so that is a big caution. Um, remember that you need to give feedback that is actionable. I, I noticed there was a whole bunch of great targets feedback and with nothing else. <laughs> um, however, many of you did take, take my lead and were using many of the suggestions that I made about your targets, you know, using verbs that that are specific, like evaluate um, uh, and identify. I mean, those are common uh, action verbs, and many of you were concerned that you were using them over and over again, but that's okay. Identify is a knowledge verb. It's a very popular knowledge verb. 
Uh, and it really describes what you want students to be able to do. So um, remember, giving feedback is a skill that has been shown to increase student achievement. As you, if many of you have seen from the task three is feedback is something you're going to be evaluated on when you do the EdTPA. So it's imperative that you learn how to do it well. There's a big difference between criticism, which only po points out what is wrong, and supportive feedback, which points out, which points students in the right direct direction and hint, excuse me, and helps them answer the questions. How do I close the gap? So uh, where am I going? Where am I now? How do I close the gap is the feedback part. So make sure you read Wiggins' article, which is back in module four, seven keys to effective feedback. I also have a link to it in my transcript. All right, module five. This module began the, the test creation process. Remember to read the item writing guidelines in Chapui and Stiggins, chapter five, Popham, chapter six, and Clay. Is this a trick question? It's an old uh, pamphlet, but it's still, uh, it's one of the best I've seen for writing items. Uh, you should also use the rubric to guide you as it lays out the requirements for formatting, like you need hanging indents for all your questions and answers. Your, your um, in fill-ins, your blanks need to be all the same length and located at or near the end of the sentence. Um, so it's all there in the rubric. Um, uh, there it, Fill-ins are typically an issue. According to Chapui and Stiggins, you should write out propositions and then leave one keyword blank. There should be enough information in the sentence that a knowledgeable person could answer the question. Multiple choice items should be in the form of a question. So don't write it with a blank at the end. You know, make it in the form of a question. Um, watch my formatting the selected response test video uh, for assistance. Batching should be in two columns and they should look neat. <laughs> they also should be similar items. Uh, I've, I've gone through step by step how to create the matching section in my video in uh, module under uh, selected response test creation materials. Um, the, in your matching, they all should be similar items and have one more, at least one more answer. The, I've seen a couple of tests so far that had two or three more answers, which is even better. I mean, uh, because that, that eliminates, that, that gets, that's a, that avoids the process of elimination. Um, people are still struggling with making targets specific and measurable. Remember, you are creating them as if you are teaching the information in the handbook and the information has to be in the handbook. So you can't ask them to uh, provide strategies for teaching and learning or provide strategies for feedback, though there are no strategies in the handbook. So you can't have that as a learning target. Many of you wrote great reasoning questions, most, mostly depicting a teaching scenario or ask, and, and asking your classmates to evaluate it using a specific set of rubrics. Remember, if you do that, all, all, tell the candidate which rubric to use, that's important. There are 15 of them. And don't use the exact language of the rubric or it will be simply a knowledge task. Remember, this is an open book test. If you just say, uh, did not use uh, research to support his um, lesson, you can't see that in a teaching scenario. You can't read that in a, in a, um, a commentary. It's just not there. <laughs> so if you do a commentary and you, and you don't want research to be in it, don't put it in it, but don't say it um, because that's not what an evaluator would see. Um, there are other ways to write qu reasoning questions as well, but for now it is important that you know that it can be done. Uh, another great resource is the Burkhart, Burkhart article, Making the Most Out of Multiple Choice. She gives you some ideas about writing uh, questions. Uh, in, in this module, you'll see an article by Wiggins and ancillary materials, why we should stop bashing uh, standard or state tests or standardized tests. And it's because people can't write reasoning questions. They teachers don't know how to do it. Um, so if you, this is one of the big ideas you'll walk away from this course is that there are ways to write reasoning questions in a multiple choice format. 
Um, and it dispels the myth that, that selective response tests only assess memorization, which many of you will say in this uh, upcoming discussion board about hard as the Dickens. Um, I will be giving you feedback on your draft select response test during the week. Be patient, but don't submit your second draft until you receive my feedback. Uh, so that's it for now. I will see you again next Monday, two days before St. Patrick's Day.